I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Mrs. Hex, those inverse trigonometric derivatives were crazy. There's six of them. They're kind of like not related to other stuff I know. They're a lot of work to memorize. So I got a freebie for you today. We're going to talk about the derivatives of exponential functions and logarithmic functions. Once we finish 3.9, we're going to know how to take the derivative of every single function in the whole universe. Like, well, the ones you know about. But like pretty much every single function in the whole world and all their composites. And you asked for an easy one, so here you go. The derivative scholars of e to the x is e to the x. e to the x is the only function who is his own derivative. I guess zero. Y equals zero is his own derivative. It's the only like interesting function that's its own derivative. So here we go. You're going to write that into your notes. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But now that we know the chain rule, we want to make sure that when we learn our derivative rules, we're including the chain rule in them. So the derivative with respect to x of e to the u, e raised to some function of x, is e to the u, that same function multiplied by du dx. So what I think in my head, if it's helpful to you, is the derivative of e to the something is e to the something, the exact same function, but multiplied by the derivative of the exponent. The derivative of that exponent, which is some function of x. Make sure that's in your notes. We're going to do this example. Watch how easy this is. This is going to be your favorite derivative rule. I know it. Okay, so if y is equal to e to the x plus x squared, I'm going to find dy dx. dy dx, well, can I identify the u? I don't just have e to the x. I have e to the something slightly more complicated. So we have to identify u. So u is x plus x squared. And I just wrote down on my notes paper that the derivative with respect to x of e to the u is e to the u times du dx. So here we go. The derivative with respect to x of e to the x plus x squared is e to the x plus x squared, that exact same function, multiplied by the derivative of the exponent. And the derivative with respect to x of x plus x squared, that's what makes this 1 plus 2x that multiplies. So if you're taking the free response section, please feel free to leave your answer exactly like this. It gets perfect full credit. You will probably find that on the multiple choice section that 1 plus 2x is going to get moved to the front. But I don't think you'll have a difficult time picking out from a bunch of answer choices. All right. I know when you were in Algebra 2, Precalculus, when you talked about exponential functions, you probably spent like a reasonable amount of time using functions that had a base like 2 to the x or 3 to the x, some number, some friendly number that you know raised to the x. Well, the good news is in calculus, at least 90% of the time when you see something, some function, like an exponential function, so some base raised to an exponent that's a variable or a function of a variable, that base is going to be e, which means we're going to get to use the derivative rule we just learned. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Yes. So in those 10% of the cases, so you still have to learn the rule, um, where we're going to take the derivative of a different exponential function, an exponential function with a different base, the formula you're going to have to know is just slightly different. So instead of having e raised to the x, what if I have some other base? call it a. could be any other number besides e. a is getting raised to some to the exponent x. The derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a. So the same exponential function you started with times the natural log of the base. So you can see the connection to the e to the x function. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Well, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x but I have this extra times the natural log of a. And if we're going to use the chain rule up in our, in that, in order to be more flexible with our derivatives from now on, then the derivative with respect to x of a to the u is a to the u times the natural log of a times du dx. So these all go in your notes at the top of that page. It's the top of the page? In the middle of the page? And we're going to do an example. 
Okay. This is the craziest function I could think of to make. Uh, it's an exponential function. I have some base. It's pi. Pi is just a number. And it's getting raised to an exponent that's a function of x. 3x squared is a function of x. So in this case, my a, the base, is pi. 3x squared is the exponent. So that's my u. That's the exponent that a is getting raised to. So I'm going to make sure I have that written down so that I remember my a is pi, my u is 3x squared. I'm going to need to know du dx, but that's not so bad. du dx is just going to be 6x. I can use the power rule there. So I wrote down this expression for finding the derivative of a raised to the u, and that's going to be a to the u times the natural log of a times du dx. So see the three parts I have here? Here's my exact same exponential function that I started with, pi to the 3x squared, times the natural log of pi, the natural log of the base, times the derivative, du dx, the derivative of the exponent. The exponent was 3x squared, the derivative is 6x. Feel free to write that multiplication, those three terms, those three factors can go in any order. But pi, 3x, pi to the 3x squared times 6x times natural log of pi. Okay, and so just before we move on there, one last thing to notice, you're like, oh wow, two derivative formulas, oh, that's a lot. Just notice that they're really actually the exact same formula. We said the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is e to the x. And it may seem like it's a different rule when we say the derivative with respect to x of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a. But just think of this second rule as like the more complicated, the more powerful version of the rule and use it to take the derivative of e to the x. Well, if I try to take the derivative of e to the x using this rule, a is e, and so I'm going to have the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is the same function I started with, e to the x, times the natural log. What's the base? The natural log of e. Well, what's the natural log of e? It's 1. So I really do have that natural log of e, that natural log of a, in this formula. It's just it always evaluates to 1 when your base is e. So if you want to just think of, that's a 1. If you want to just think of this as one super powerful formula, but it means you're going to have to remember that the derivative, no, the, the natural log of e is 1. So if you're not sure you're going to remember that, then you're going to make sure you want to know this version of the rule. All right, so here's what we know so far. The derivative with respect to x of e to the u is e to the u du dx. If I have an exponential function with some other, like maybe fancier base besides e, the derivative with respect to x of a to the u is a to the u du dx times an extra factor of the natural log of a. It turns out once we know these derivatives for exponential functions, we can use them to figure out the derivatives of the logarithmic functions. It's coming up in the next video.